My name's Andy Davis. I'm the Sales and Marketing Director for Prometic Bioseparations. I've been at the company for about five and a half years, but prior to that, spent about 20 years or so with GE Healthcare Life Science uh, in various roles, uh, mainly to do with the bioprocess division. Uh, and as you can see from the title of my talk, we uh, want to cover the use of flow through polishing techniques, in particular, uh, when it's sort of linked with uh, multi-mode ligands. So just a few words about uh, Prometic. Uh, we are our enabling technologies company, and we've been serving the biotech and biopharma industry for about the last 30 years. Um, we have a range of bioseparations products, both off the shelf and also bespoke through our custom absorbent development program. A various number of our products are in FDA, EMEA approved processes. And we recently launched a range of uh, both semi-disposable and disposable pre-packed GMP ready columns. And finally, the, the last product we've launched is uh, what we call our MMM library, multi-mode mimetic ligand library. And this is really what I want to focus on uh, the main content of the talk. So I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of the techniques that are shown here, but what I wanted to point out is where does mixed mode really fit in, in terms of uh, separation capabilities. Uh, so starting with what we'd probably say is the, most, the least resolving technique, you have gel filtration, which is separating differences in size. Uh, that's largely been replaced by membrane separations technology. Uh, then you've got uh, iron exchange, hydrophobic interaction chromatography, really separating due to differences in net charge and hydrophobicity. And then if we jump ahead to the affinity uh, purification, this is really the most resolving technique uh, possible in bioseparations. And the multi-mode ligands really fit between what is the classic iron exchange and uh, the affinity technology. So it's really a, a a higher resolving technique than ion exchange and HIC, but not quite as resolving as the uh, affinity. But when we look at how we link those techniques together, if you look at what would be the traditional uh, DSP quite a few years ago, it was a matter of linking these different techniques in a sequential order to achieve uh, final purity of your end product. Now, whilst that was quite effective, Obviously, it was a fairly uh, lengthy process, quite uh, costly. And because there were so many steps, the yield uh, that the process would deliver could be significantly impacted. So what we've seen now is a trend towards a uh, more modern approach where we have a, a very effective capture step, typically using affinity chromatography, where the bulk of purification is done in the initial step. Some of the purity levels you can get just through affinity can be in excess of 90% in a single step. And that then simplifies the rest of the process uh, to one or two polishing steps just to remove the trace level of contaminants that are around. And more recently, uh, a lot of people have been adopting what we call a flow through purification where the target protein passes straight through the column and you're basically capturing the contaminants or impurities that still reside in the solution. And as I mentioned, the popularity of multimode ligands is certainly common in the last few years. And this is really because they're extremely useful in that flow through polishing mode. And they combine both ionic and a hydrophobic group to give uh, better selectivity, as I mentioned, to ionic Jane and Hicks, but also more tolerance to different buffer conditions. So you may have heard of high salt iron exchange resins. These are all mixed mode or multi-mode ligands. The structure you see here is actually the GE uh, Capto MMC multi-mode ligand. Uh, and as you can see, there are two different groups, one being charged entity, one being a hydrophobic entity. And it allows that multi-mode interaction with the protein or contaminant of interest. The one thing about the uh, current available multimode ligands is that you have to optimize both binding and elution conditions for your particular target or contaminant. 
Uh, and that can be either by adjusting pH, adjusting the salt concentration, or even the polarity of the solutions. And what that basically means is that there's a lot of time needs to be spent optimizing the separation. Uh, can be time consuming, and also you're trying to fit the ore sample to work in conditions that suit the ligand of binding. So what a, pr a Prometic we wanted to try and do is actually flip that on its head. So rather than trying to optimize the sample to bind to the ligand, we wanted to create a range of ligands that will bind to the sample in its native condition without the need for any adjustment. So we created a multi-mode ligand library uh, to actually achieve that. What this basically um, consists of is 96 different uh, affinity or multi-mode ligands that are attached to an agarose base matrix through a spacer arm. And we use um, a variety of different uh, ligands, both anionic, cationic, aliphatic, and aromatic hydrophobic groups to create an extremely diverse library. The uh, library, as I mentioned, is 96 uh, mini columns in a typical eight by 12 array. And you can do very rapid screening simply by applying feedstock across the whole of the plate and then identifying which ligands bind either the target protein that you're interested in or the contaminants that you're trying to remove or impurities from that particular solution. So with that in mind, if we go back to the, the slide uh, highlighting the difference in selectivities, we believe that the multimode library fits in between affinity and the commercially available multimode ligands because of the diversity of the library that's actually in place. This is how the actual library is built up. So you have an agarose base matrix uh, and with it attached is a triazine group. And then you can see on the arms of the triazine group, we can attach different chemical entities to give the ligand uh, both an ionic and a hydrophobic capability. Uh, doing that a number of times, uh, Prometic are very experienced with the triazine chemistry. It's a very stable chemistry, uh, very reproducible. And it also gives you a ligand that's very caustic stable. So in terms of the lifetime of this resin, you can use it uh, repeatedly, you can clean it with up to one molar caustic and get you know, one, 200 cycles out of this resin before you need to replace it. As opposed to something like protein A, it has a much uh, more reduced lifetime. On this slide here, what you can basically see is the different types of uh, chemistries that we can attach to the triazine group to create this broad spectrum of uh, ligands. And what we've done to ease the use of the, uh, the multi-mode library is cluster the ligands which have similar, broadly similar properties into six different zones. So in zone one, this is where we're generally looking at ionic uh, ligands, ones that are gonna uh, interact on a charge basis. In zone six, we have the hydrophobic interaction. And then in the middle is where we have what we'd class as truly multi-mode ligands. Uh, and this is a mixture between anionic, cationic, uh, aliphatic, and aromatic ligands, all in a slightly different uh, uh, confrontation, therefore giving a uh, very broad diversity. And what we've done is actually look at um, different chemical and physical properties to actually demonstrate the differences or the diversity of the different libraries. So as you can see in the top two slides, we're looking at hydrophobic and hydrophilic accessible surfaces. And the blue means it's very low and the red means it's very high. So we've basically created a heat map. And you can see just looking at that, you're clearly seeing a, a very different or diverse range of ligands. Likewise on the bottom, you're looking at hydrogen bonding donor and acceptor. And again, it's demonstrating a very broad diverse array of ligands. Look at uh, uh, different properties such as polarity, aromaticity, uh, flexibility, or even binding to a molecule such as HSA. 
And again, clearly showing there's a very diverse array of different ligands. One particular thing to point out is um, this particular ligand here. You can see in three different properties that it showing that those ligands have very similar uh, properties or a high level. Uh, and this is related to the propensity of albumin to bind to very long hydrocarbon chains. So it has high polarity, high flexibility, and obviously binding to albumin. So by utilizing this data, we're demonstrating, you know, we've got a very diverse library. Uh, but this is of course in theory, so what we need to do is show we can demonstrate that in practice. So the next few slides we'll look at is actually utilizing a few applications to show the diversity of the library and how it can be used in flow through polishing. So this is the, the multi-mode ligand library. Uh, as you can see, it's a very classic eight by 12 array. Very easy to use and screening can be done within one or two hours. Uh, and therefore gives you a very quick idea of which ligands you should then focus on to do further development. There's no need for complex or liquid handling equipment. A simple multi-mode pipette is all you'll need to actually utilize this. Uh, and the flow is by gravity. So again, there's no need for vacuum or uh, centrifugation of this plate. This is a bit more detail about the plate. So each of the individual wells is a discrete uh, 250 microliter column with a top and bottom frit, and that actually prevents the, uh, the columns drying out. The free flow of gravity gives a residence time of around two minutes. So at least there's sufficient time to actually interact with the molecule of interest. So let's move on to a couple of applications just to demonstrate the use of this plate. The first one we look at is a typical uh, monoclonal antibody in a Cho feedstock. And the way we actually utilize the, uh, the plate is to equilibrate it exactly the same conditions as a sample that you're gonna to apply to the particular plate. So in this uh, particular application, it's around about pH 7.5, uh, conductivity around 10 to 12 millisiemens per centimeter. So the, the whole plate is equilibrated using a multi-mode pipette uh, to dispense the buffer, allowing that to flow through and then applying one mil of sample to each of the uh, columns across the plate. Then collect the flat flow through and then uh, follow that through with a wash, collect the wash and then move to a low pH buffer to achieve elution from each of the individual columns. All of those uh, solutions can be collected in a deep well plate and that can then be used for uh, analysis in a variety of different ways. So let's look at binding of the whole map in the first instance. And just as we saw in the physical and chemistry properties, we've created a heat map. Again, where you see it's red, it's showing it's got very high binding of the whole monoclonal. And where it's showing blue or a zero, that shows there's no, little or no binding of the antibody. Now, bear in mind, what we're looking to do here is develop a flow through purification. So we're not looking to actually bind the antibody. We're looking for ligands that don't bind the antibody or show very little binding of the antibody. And if we focus in on zone two, just as an example, uh, we can see again, even in that smaller block of array, there's still quite a diversity of different bindings from full binding of antibody to no or little binding. And we can focus in further on that uh, by looking then at an SDS page just of zone two. And again, you can see different patterns of binding. The antibody is this, oop, that high band up there. Uh, and what we're basically looking for is any zones which have no antibody binding, but can show demonstrate binding of either host cell protein or impurities that happen to be in that particular solution. If we then look at analyzing the eluted fractions for host cell protein, again, we can see there's quite a diversity there. And in particular, if you look at rows C and D, you can see there's a lot of ligands there that are very effective in binding host cell protein. 
The next step would then be to compare those that bind antibody, those that bind host cell proteins, so you can determine the ligands that are exactly the ones you need. And the ones highlighted in yellow, you can clearly see there's no or little or no antibody binding, but very high levels of host cell protein binding. So immediately, these would be ligands you'd want to look at further, either in a pack, a proper column pack mode, or further um, studies just to make sure that this was giving you the performance you want. Also of interest are the ones oh, that you can just about see in green. Um, and again, these show low binding of antibody, uh, medium binding of host cell protein, but now they're starting to bind at a very high level, the main impurity. So you've got two different species of ligands there. One that's very effective at removing host cell proteins, one that's very effective in removing very closely associated impurities, but neither bind the antibody itself. So quite clearly these could be used in a flow through mode to purify or polish the uh, antibody solution. And just to confirm that result, an SDS page was then uh, prepared on the six different ligands that we identified along with host cell protein analysis. And clearly any of these ligands could be then taken further to sort of develop the uh, purification process further. So let's look at a, a few other applications. Uh, this one in particular is looking at uh, a spiked IgA uh, in an IVIG solution. And again, this is just looking at the uh, flow through fractions. So what we're looking for here is a very low level of IgA. Uh, and the ones highlighted in yellow here highlight low levels of IgA flowing through the column, i.e. they've been bound by the ligand. And we identified six that uh, had greater than 95% binding of IgA with little or no binding of IVIG or IgG. Again, highlighting that these uh, ligands could be used for a flow through process. So those were a couple of relatively straightforward uh, feedstocks that we could look at to, uh, to demonstrate the diversity of the library. We've also looked at plasma, which is a much more complex feedstock, to see how this could actually be used again to uh, identify or remove particular problem contaminants. It's quite interesting to consider plasma proteins, obviously all being human-based, you know, what is an impurity in a, in a plasma? Um, so what you really need to look at is if you've got a, like a, a replacement therapy to make sure that particular proteins such as a clotting factor aren't present so you don't have any thrombolytic events or a protease, for example, can give uh, a bleeding uh, issue or occurrence. So again, looking at the plate, now we're looking at uh, a plasma source applied across the plate at a particular pH once the plate's been equilibrated. And again, it's in the, just collecting the flow through fractions. We're looking for removal of calocrine from this particular solution. One uh, ligand in particular, G1, demonstrated 87% uh, removal of calocrine with little or no uh, binding of the antibody itself. So again, we've identified a ligand by doing a simple screen that could be used for that particular removal. Another example is the removal of factor 11 from plasma. And in this case, there were three different ligands, again, demonstrating very effective removal of factor 11 from plasma. And again, as with the calocrine, G1 was shown to be very effective in that removal. Again, with all three, greater than 85% binding of factor 11 uh, with little or no IgG binding. So in this particular example, we've now gone to a classic column chromatography to demonstrate the plate is transferable to you know, classic uh, a separation. So we've got a two and a half mil packed column and we apply 20 mils of the plasma feed and uh, equilibrated at pH 
7.4, and then washed with a one mole of salt solution. Flow through fractions, post load wash and elution fractions all collected, and the samples tested for uh, IgG and the presence of other plasma, and also factor 11 by ELISA. So it's a very classic affinity profile. So you've got a very large flow through peak, and then the elution peak, very discreet and distinct at the end of it to recover the factor 11. And then looking at SDS analysis, 90, greater than 98% of IgG was recovered in the flow through. So again, showing that it's a true flow through process. And the absorbent G1 bound around 94% of the factor 11. Again, given a very good flow through polishing step. So I hoped in this uh, short presentation that I've demonstrated that uh, by using a very diverse uh, ligand library, we can optimize the separation in a flow through mode without the need to actually modify the sample feedstock itself. It allows the capture of uh, problem impurities directly from the, the material uh, without any adjustment. And we've changed the paradigm from optimizing the sample to bind to the ligand to actually creating a very diverse library that actually allows you to bind without any changing conditions. Once you've found a ligand that works, then we can provide you with uh, larger volumes of the resin, either pre-packed or in a loose format for further experimentation. So thanks for listening. Uh, we are just across the way in booth 1746 if you want to know more about the information. Other than that, I'll uh, open the floor for questions. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, as you said, if there are any questions, um, now is the time to raise your hands. <laughs> Sorry, I still heard it just fine outside the barrier. Um, <laughs> I think I was talking to you yesterday and I mentioned in my talk earlier this morning that there is a potential displacement for protein A with a synthetic ligand. Is that what you're talking about? Are you going to displace protein A? No, we have tried in the past, believe it or not. So we have a product called Mabsorbent, which, which does bind uh, monoclonal antibodies, but I think protein A is very hard to displace as a platform technology. What we can do is what we can do is supplement the use of protein A uh, subsequently in terms of flow through polishing for host cell protein removal. Do you have the potential? <laughs> do you have pipeline? We're all looking for a new answer. Yeah, we, we have tried a lot, honestly. <laughs>